Hello and welcome to Electric Guitar Review. My name is Ben Morgan Brown and you've just been watching Jace Morris demonstrating the Viper X3 from PV Amps. This third generation Viper model is a 100 watt combo with a 12 inch speaker and 36 onboard amp models including 6 acoustic and 6 bass amps. With 26 onboard effects and 12 stomp box effects, the X3 has over 400 amp accessible presets, Bluetooth wireless remote control and audio streaming, an aux connector, and a headphone jack. With a what you see is what you get display panel and 10 instrument models, the Viper X3 has an RRP of £399. For this review, Jace is playing his Seth Backer's Nautilus Modern, so let's have a listen to some more tones from the X3 now, and then please join me afterwards for my thoughts. <laughs> The Viper X3 is a pretty hefty bit of kit. Obviously it's not as heavy as a 100 watt valve amp, but it's still a few pounds more than I was expecting. It's also loud. When I first plugged in at home, I nearly blew the pictures off the walls and I quickly turned the master volume down to a more sensible level. Unfortunately, I then started scrolling through presets and discovered that the volume levels between them could change drastically. One might be almost whisper quiet and the next was making my trousers flap as I sat in front of the amp. I suppose it's not a bad thing to have some volume on tap, and bringing the master volume right down did help negate the risk of blowing my eardrums, but a little more consistency between presets might have been nice. I found the control panel pleasingly free of clutter, but that does mean there's a few knobs with multiple functions, mainly those concerned with switching between editing different sections of your tone, and I did get caught out with these a few times, but I think a little more time with the amp and I'd have it pretty much figured out. That there is a display makes it a little easier to change settings, but I'll admit I did get a bit frustrated with the interface, and some of the amp abbreviations are a bit unclear without referencing the manual. Running through the presets, it's obvious that there's an abundance of different tones available, but in common with most modeling amps I find, almost all of the presets were quite over the top in terms of gain and the amount of effects, and really they're there to demonstrate the range rather than provide that many useful tones. However, once I found a more subtle preset that caught my ear and dialed it back to my liking, the combination of a 12 inch speaker and the open back cab did make for a beefier and fuller tone than I'd expect from a digital amp. Getting to grips with the power sponge control made a difference as well. Rather than thinking of it as another master volume, by treating it as a power soak, I was able to get some of the feel of an amp that was pushing a bit of volume without it being too loud. I also found that this control was the key, along with balancing your pre and post gain settings, to getting a better on the edge tone, where picking dynamics and volume adjustments made it the guitar control how much grit was present. Running through the amp models, there is a wide variety of models available, with perhaps a little bias towards the grittier, heavier side of things. It's always a bit of a minefield deciphering the nicknames given to amp models, and I'll admit to not being familiar with all of the amps on offer here, but the obvious ones definitely seem to me to at least capture some of the vibe and distinctive characteristics of the originals. The effects section is chock full of stuff to keep you busy for months on end, and there was a good amount of tweakability available that should allow you to cop any tone of your choosing. 
I did find that some of the modulation effects sounded a bit over the top, and to my ear a lot of them stood out as being an effect rather than a part of the overall tone, but that could just be my personal preference for more subtle sounds. I can't say I was particularly impressed with the instrument models, which to me didn't seem to track very well, leading to instinct notes and clashing tones. The 12 string might just work for that one time you have to play the intro to Hotel California and don't want to change guitars, and there's a couple that are fun to mess around with, but I can't imagine many users will get that much mileage from them. At £399, the Viper X3 is pretty competitively priced, particularly when you consider the beefiness of the tone. It's a shame there's no foot switch included, even a simple two button affair would at least mean you could set up a clean and a dirty tone for live use, and I also think the addition of a DI out would finish off the specs nicely, and allow you to use the amp as a monitor on bigger stages. The headphone out could be used as a line out, but it not only cuts the speaker off, but is a 3.5mm jack, so it's not the most practical solution. Despite falling into the trap of setting its presets to show off mode, the Viper X3 from PV is capable of a huge variety of tones, both classic and modern. Its solid cabinet build, 12 inch speaker and open back design mean that it packs more punch than many digital amps, and it should hold its own at rehearsals and modest gigs. The modelled instruments are a bit gimmicky in my opinion, but what I can't deny is that the versatility and options available for under £400 are very impressive. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Electric Guitar Review. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon to be kept up to date when we post new videos, and Jason and I look forward to seeing you next time.